As coaches, we are obsessed with making everything that we do in training look game-like. And I totally get that. I'm one of the biggest proponents of that and making sure things actually translate to games. But with that said, there's absolutely value in doing things that don't look like a game. Doing things that you would never really actually execute in a game. In this video, we're gonna talk about why, give you guys some examples of things that I do that don't look like you would do them in a game, but they can really help you build your skill, which will help you in the game. So when it comes to coaches using things that are game-like, most of what we actually do isn't even game-like at all. Think about doing certain reps on air, right? There's no defense, there's no perception, there's no action, there's no pressure. It isn't really anything like a game. Or picture you shooting five spot up catch and shoot threes in training. That looks nothing like a game. There's no defense. We're never gonna shoot the same spot twice in a row. So is this even really game like in the first place? So with a lot of these spot up catch and shoot threes or working on things on air with no defense, there's very minimal challenge. So there's gonna be very minimal results that we're going to get from that. So some of the things that I'm gonna show you aren't game-like, but they present a lot of challenge, they present a lot of problem-solving ability, and a lot of exploration for these players. And that's kind of the first point of why doing things that don't look game-like can be beneficial. Doing things that present a challenge and allow these players to explore different solutions to the same problem that they're gonna see in the game. So for a quick example, one thing that I'll do is I'll have players start from back here, full speed run, and try to jump from the free throw line and get a layup. When is a player ever going to do that in a game? Hopefully never, but it presents a lot of challenge. It forces them to problem solve because they're jumping from here. They have to figure out a way to solve that problem. And a lot of times we're working on coordination. We're working on underhand layups. So yes, it doesn't look like a game, but the things that it presents can help these players get better in a game. So the next drill that I like to do is having players run away from the hoop and then the last second try to jump turn square in the air. So again, I would never really have a player running directly away from the hoop, jumping and trying to square and turn in the air. You might get that once a season on a last second shot. Again, it's not really game like players aren't going to do it, but we're overloading this skill, right? We're overloading the skill of balance, trying to solve that problem of being able to turn in the air, shoot off balance. So when they get in situations where it's a little bit of a fade, it feels easy because they've explored that problem to such a depth that those little problems seem so easy. So another one that I might do to help players work on their mechanics, their acceleration and things like that, I might have them start like this, right? On the ball and then they have to explode out. Players are never gonna do that in a game or they might be kneeling down here and then they have to explode out again. Neither of these things are ever going to happen in a game, but we're working certain qualities and skills that they can't normally get off just a rip or off, off the dribble type of thing. So, when we're here in this position exploding out, we're working on their ability to drop their shoulder and their acceleration mechanics, right? Shin angles, things like that. Same thing with this one, right? We're here, they gotta explode out, they're dropping their shoulder, they're solving that problem that I'm placing on them through that constraint of starting on the ground or starting in a nailing position. So another one that I did this past weekend with some players, they had their eyes closed. Players should never really have their eyes closed for an extended period of time in a game no questions asked, right? But the drill that I was working on, their eyes closed here, players moving with them, and then whenever they open their eyes, they're playing live. So again, yes, that's never gonna happen in a game, but the constraint, putting their eyes closed and then opening them, is forcing them to again solve a problem, but also read the situation way faster than they would in a game. So if I'm off the dribble in a game, I can obviously see everything on the floor and I can pick up more cues from the defender in front of me because I have more time. So when I close my eyes and then I open them, I have less time to solve the same problem. So it's gonna force these players to pick up on certain cues way faster than they would need to in a game. So again, they're off the catch in a game. They have more time to read the situation, pick up on certain cues and then react to them. So again, just simple scenarios like this that aren't game-like, they're never gonna happen in a game, but we can train them and they do have a benefit. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of examples that I use myself that are not game-like. They do not happen in a game, but we can train these in practice to allow players to explore, to express creativity, and to really discover their capabilities and push their boundaries, right? Working off certain off the catch drills all day long on air aren't gonna really allow players to do this. So implementing constraints, doing things that aren't gonna happen in a game can achieve that goal that we're looking for. Now again, 
this is a balance. I can't do only things that don't look like a game, but I can sprinkle these in here and there. And like I said in the beginning, I'm a huge proponent of making things game-like, but real game-like, adding in reads and utilizing the games-based approach is one of my favorite ways to do that, which I talk about in numerous videos here on the channel. So again, it's all about a balance. Don't take this too serious where all he does is stuff that's not game realistic or not game like again balance sprinkle it in when you feel necessary but don't get caught up in everything always has to look like a game because it doesn't and you may be limiting players if you're only operating in that way so my challenge to you guys is analyze your training as both a coach and as a player what are you doing that's only game like and what are you doing that's not necessarily game like do you have both ends of the spectrum if you do analyze it if you don't analyze where you can implement each how you can make things more game-like and how you can make things a little less game-like to get that benefit that we were talking about. If you have any ideas, if you guys have any drills that you like or things that you learn from me, please let me know. Send them to me on Instagram or email, whatever. Always happy to learn, to discuss as well. So I didn't try to get too, too sciencey here. If you guys are interested in more of that, DM me. I can send you guys some resources. But if you guys like the video, please drop a comment, a like, a subscribe. Would really appreciate it. Plenty more videos coming your guys' way. So make sure you stay tuned. Appreciate it.